Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. And have you ever wondered what the proper frame rate is to use when shooting video or what the differences are between 24 frames, 30 frames, and 60 frames a second? Well, I'm about to give you a free preview that's going to explain that using Hungry Hungry Hippos. This is a preview from the Fronos Photo Guide to DSLR video. If you haven't picked that up just yet, we are running a sale that ends Saturday, August 13th at midnight. Go to the link up on the screen right now and at checkout, use the code SHOOTVIDEO, all one word, lowercase, to get 24% off the already discounted price. That means you're gonna get an extra $23 and change off when you purchase that right now until that sale is over. But if you don't wanna pick it up and you just wanna learn how frame rate works, go ahead and enjoy this free preview right now. Yellow ball, I got the yellow ball. Oh, all right, I think I ate the most balls there. So. So why are we using Hungry Hungry Hippos to demonstrate anything? Well, we're gonna get into frame rate. Our cameras have the ability to be set at different frame rates, and that's what Todd's gonna to explain. So what are the different frame rates we're gonna be working with? The general frame rates that everybody's gonna find in their cameras is 24 frames per second, 30 frames per second, and 60 frames per second. So what you're saying is that at 24 frames we have literally 24 individual still images and 30, there's 60 still frames that all make up the video? That's exactly right. So what is that giving us? 24 frames per second is going to give you that cinematic film look. It's gonna give you a motion blur. We've all grown up watching movies shot at 24 frames per second, and a lot of guys tend to gravitate towards 24 frames just to imitate that look. So that gives you a certain look that may be good for one thing, but maybe 30 is better for something else. 30 frames is gonna give us a more realistic look. There's actually more frames there capturing more action, but it's gonna give you that video look. So it's something similar to what we saw in the, in the 80s and 90s when my mom had her Betamax? Or even like a newscast. Even, even your iPhones, I believe, they shoot at 30 frames per second. It's definitely gonna look a little more real. You're catching more frames per second, so you're capturing a little more motion. It's gonna look a little cleaner, a little crisper. Your, your, uh, your sporting events might be shot at 30 frames per second but it doesn't, it doesn't have that feel. It doesn't give you that cinematic look that a lot of people like to have. All right, so then 60 frames a second. 60 frames per second, for what our purposes are, is gonna be used for slow motion. You can shoot 60 frames per second and play it back at 60 frames. That's gonna be a real hyper-realistic look. That's what you're gonna see watching the football game, your NFL games, your video games, a lot of that's 60 frames per second. But for most purposes, for filmmakers, you wanna stick around that 24 frames per second and utilize 60 frames for your slow motion. So basically 60 frames a second, is, it's gonna give us the ability to have better slow motion. Why wouldn't we shoot slow motion with 24 frames. Well, when you take the 60 frames and you put it in your editing software, it's probably gonna be in a 24 frame timeline. That's gonna give you more frames to slow down. It's gonna give you a butter smooth slow motion. If you take 24 frames and decide later, oh, I'd love to have that in slow motion, it's going to actually duplicate frames and it's gonna give you a stuttery looking slow motion, not really as butter smooth as 60 frames is gonna give you. So then why wouldn't we shoot 60 frames all the time? It sounds good in theory, but shooting 60 all the time is going to multiply all of your data by two and a half times. You're gonna eat up more cards, you're gonna eat up more hard drives, and it's gonna really tax your editing system at the end of the day. What you really wanna do is shoot 24 when you need, shoot 60 when you need. If you're unsure about certain scenes, shoot it at 60, you can dump it back down to 24, but shooting 60 all the time is gonna slow down your production, slow down your post-production, and time is money. All right, Todd, so we, we've talked about the different frame rates. Now we wanna demonstrate the 24 frames, the 30 frames, and 60 frames as it pertains here to Hungry Hungry Hippos. Before we jump into the frame rates, I wanna remind you guys that we already have everything set. We're just focusing on what the frame rates are looking like right now. We'll get to every other individual piece of this puzzle later, but Todd, what are we starting with? So what we're gonna start with is 24 frames per second. That's gonna give you that motion blur we talked about a little bit. I think it's gonna be a little bit more pronounced once you see that, then see 60 and 30. But let's start off with 24. All right, and rolling, and action. All right, Todd, let's watch the playback. Let's see what we have here. When we play this back, you can see, as the balls are flying around and the hippos are going, with all the action, you're seeing a little bit of motion blur with everything going around. It's not out of focus, but just the motion is blurring. Right, so where you got your focus proper, it's still getting motion blur, but that has more to do with the frame rate. Absolutely, so let's move on to 30 frames per second. I think that's where you're gonna definitely see the difference in the motion blur. And recording, and 
Action. So what you're watching right now is a 24 frame timeline. So that means the video is being played back at 24 frames a second. We want to show you what 30 and 60 frames looks like, but we can't do that in a 24 frame timeline. So please refer to the files. The names are blinking up on the screen right now so that you can see what 30 frames a second looks like and 60 frames a second. All right, so now the hopes are that uh, it's more sharp. Absolutely, it's gonna look a little more realistic here. And there's the playback. Now, as you can see here, it's definitely a little sharper. Everything looks a lot crisper. All right, that's pretty cool. So I can only imagine that at 60 frames a second, it's gonna be even more crisp. Absolutely, but 60 is also gonna give us the ability to just slow it down and get a butter smooth slow motion. All right, let's try it out. All right, now we got our 60 and rolling and action. All right, so let's see what 60 frames gives us at, at full speed first. All right, here's 60 frames full speed, boom. Oh, so whereas before it wasn't looking, there was that motion blur at 24 and 30 started to, to lock it up more, 60 has even locked that up more. Everything looks extremely sharp and crisp. Very, very crisp, very realistic. Um, a great look for certain things, but most people still tend to gravitate towards the 24 frames for that cinematic look. Now, let me show you what it looks like when we slow it down using the 60 frames down to a 24 playback. Now, as you can see, butter smooth slow motion. So really much nice. crisper. Yep. Crisp image, very nice slow motion. Something you, you're used to seeing cinematically when you think of slow motion. So with that said, what we should try, let's slow the 24 frames a second one down and see how that looks. Let's get back to that. So back here is our 24 frames and here is slow motion now. Oh, that's crazy. Now, as you can see, it's got a stutter to it. It's got a lag, it's duplicating frames. So basically what's happening is it's, it's not as crisp and clean as if you shot it full on at 60 frames a second. So remember that out there. If you know you're gonna be doing slow motion, you're gonna wanna start off at the 60 frames a second so that you can slow it down. Because if you try to slow down the 24 frames a second, it just doesn't look as professional or as clean. So what we've seen here, you've seen your 24 frames, you've seen your 30 and you've seen your 60. You've also seen slow motion done in different ways. What we're trying to show you here are the different options that you have so that you can determine what's going to work best for you. Now, like Todd mentioned earlier, 24 frames a second seems to be what the industry standard is or where most people like to shoot to get that cinematic feel, but it's up to you when you're shooting to determine if you want that 30 or that 60. And that's why we gave you that demonstration right here. So Todd, let's move on to the next thing. So I hope you enjoyed that free preview and a look inside the Phronos Photo Guide to DSLR video. If you haven't picked it up yet and you loved what you just saw, well go over to the link on the screen right now because we are running a sale until August 13th, which is Saturday at midnight. Go to the link, use the code SHOOTVIDEO, all lowercase one word at checkout to get 24% off the already discounted price. That means you're going to save $23 and change off the discounted price that is there right now. So please go ahead and take advantage of that. I know it's going to help you out if you have a DSLR or a mirrorless camera and you're looking to understand how to shoot video with it. Well, we've created that guide. So go over to the link, take advantage of that code, and we'll see you. Jared Poland, Photo.com. See ya.